race at Portland. That appeal will not be heard until the 18th of September. So if you assume he wins it, then Al Unser Jr. is very much in the points fight. And it's Jock Villeneuve's championship to lose. As a matter of fact, he must finish here sixth or better if he wants to finish with a championship here in his home country. Now, there are other stories all up and down the grid. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Paul, there are 27 other challengers against Villeneuve here in the streets of Vancouver today, and all of them have got great hopes. The immediate challenge for Villeneuve will come from right alongside Jimmy Vassar for the fourth time this year as a front row starter. The third time, in fact, he's been side by side with Jack in the front row. There are always concerns on a street circuit. So much concrete. Vassar says you've just got to stay out of trouble. That's one of the keys, but there are many other keys. For that, let's go to Jan Bikas. Well, Gary, today, Scott Goodyear, the Canadian, starts fourth, and it's the best ever qualifying position for Honda on a road course. Now, asked about his major concerns today for the race, without hesitation, he said, these right here, tire management. If a driver uses too much throttle, spins these tires, heats up the surface, it could be a big concern for the drivers by the end of the race. Paul? And the challenge here today is a tight, tough, and Derek, somewhat controversial circuit. And for whatever reason, IndyCar racing over the years here at Vancouver has become a contact sport. Now, there are two ways to be successful. Last year, Alan Sir Jr. was virtually incident-free, caught a good yellow, went on to win. Michael Andretti, on the other hand, had two unscheduled pit stops, went to the back twice, hit 11 different cars, and still made it onto the podium. Now, because it is so tight here and difficult to pass, drivers to a man are not so worried about who they may hit, they're more worried about who may hit them. And consider the impact on the championship. Now we've got a special surprise for you here today. P.J. Jones won in about everything he's ever driven. Now you're looking at Indy cars. Yep, we're uh, just about ready, about a month away from testing the Eagle chassis and the Toyota engine. All right, but you're here to help the Deuce. That's right. What's going on? Well, we got six onboard cameras, pit to car communication all day long on ESPN2. And you're the commentator. Ah, uh, that's it. Oh, boy. Watch us, listen to us, put a second TV up, to keep track of PJ. All right, now let's take a look at the starting grid, the pole sitter with a new track record, Jack Belnav. He can clinch the championship from his fifth pole of the season alongside Jimmy Vassar. He's finished ninth or better in every race but one since Indy. In row two, it's Bobby Rahal, the fastest Mercedes-powered qualifier. And Scott Goodyear. He finished in the top ten in all five races here in Vancouver. And on row number three, Michael Andretti. One of only two drivers ever to have won here. His wins were in 91 and 92. And Teo Fabi, his highest finish of the year was third on the street circuit at Long Beach. Row four, Robbie Gordon, last year's Vancouver pole sitter. He went on to finish second. And Jill DeFerrin, his best finish of the season came two weeks ago at Loudon. Row five is Al Unser Jr., the defending champion and a three-time winner here. Scott Pruitt is alongside. He's already had a second and two-thirds on street circuits this season. In row six, Mauricio Guzelman and Paul Tracy. The seventh row, the Fittipaldis, Christian and Emerson. The eighth row, Brian Herta and Andre Ribeiro. Row nine, Stefan Johansson and Alessandro Zampedri. The tenth row, Adrian Fernandez, Raul Boisel, Eliseo Salazar and Parker Johnstone make up row number 11. Carlos Guerrero and Juan Manuel Fangio in the twelfth row. The thirteenth row, Brian Till and Hiro Matsushita. And the fourteenth row, Marco Greco and Mimo Schiaparella. So that's the way they line up here. Let's take a look at the race analysis as the field has acknowledged the start of the engines and has begun its pace lap. 100 laps here today. The track record set back by Scott Goodyear in 93 and the fuel window left 22 to lap 36. And in today's field, the chassis, the engines, the tires, there they are. Now we'll take a look at the circuit here at Pacific Place in Molson, Indy, Vancouver. Nine turns on a 1.703 mile circuit. Those are the passing zones in blue. And so where are the trouble zones? The ones in red, exactly the same. So we're set to go. Two more races to go in the IndyCar season. A great points fight all the way down through the top ten. And there's Jock Villeneuve followed by Jimmy Vassar. They'll move into the rows of two very quickly here. Remember a number of surface changes on this track. They will go alongside the stadium here, which is covered over. There they are in that area right now. No rain in the forecast here today, but that's been a critical area when it's rained in the past. 
and like most of the street circuits, it's just rung with concrete barriers which can end a day in an eye blink. So it can make a marvelous formula for just an incredible run here today. One of the difficulties here all weekend, Paul, is it has taken two to three full laps at racing speed to bring the tires up to optimum working temperature. That has been a concern, particularly for the back half of the grid. They may get involved in somebody else's incident. Johnny Rutherford at the wheel of the PPG pace car. That's the pit exit. He turned down the rest of the field into alignment now. There's the turn on to the pit straight. And the start-finish line lies just ahead with the green flag ready to come out. And here we go. Will now sweeps across the front. Vassar into second. Ray Hall comes up into third. Rest of the field safely through. First set of very slight turns. A hairpin lies ahead. Now under serious braking, Vanell continues the lead. Michael Andretti challenges Goodyear on the outside. DeFerrin comes around Alenzer Jr. Christian Fittipaldi makes a move too, but gets caught up on the exit of the corner. Obviously a first gear hairpin. We saw cars literally stop there, but look at Scott Goodyear under a oh, look at DeFerrin. Look at the rest of them. We've got three cars involved in a situation there. DeFerrin got airborne, almost pitched head on into the wall. I think he got the tire barrier though. Now they do have a chicane area. Well, this is the chicane. There's there's an escape road there. And we're on a full course yellow here on the very first lap. They may actually route the field down. Tracy involved, that's Scott Pruitt just ahead, just behind Paul Tracy. Right on the car, Scott. Final right on the car, conversation there we have two-way with Jim McGee and Scott Pruitt who's definitely involved there and now the indication is and there it is we're gonna red flag this race we're gonna stop it put it into realignment so an incident right after the hairpin as they made the turn back to the first chicane Jill DeFerrin got punted to the outside and stopped Paul Tracy DeFerrin and Scott Pruitt so the field under a full course yellow here is Brian Herta's view of this situation. That's Alonso Jr. right ahead of him. Just ahead of him, the car is coming, but the stop it there. No, that was Emerson. Al Jr.'s up, up the road just a little bit, but it was Al Jr. who made contact with Gilles DeFerrin, punts him off the road. On board with Tracy here. DeFerrin in the situation right there on the left. And Tracy's an innocent bystander here. The traffic jam backs up. He plows right into the back of Robbie Gordon, stalls his engine, and we do not know now whether there is damage to the rear of Robbie Gordon's car. So now they are red flagged, stopped here, and nothing we have seen counts because it's first lap. Everybody that can restart will realign. We'll start the thing all over again. Today's coverage of the IndyCars on ESPN is brought to you by Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. By Toyota Motorsports, our minds are always racing. And by Firestone, America's tire since 1900. Polar Beach by Arctic Ocean. Music by Metallica and Hole. Light show by Mother Nature. And ice by Molson. Molson Ice. The Molson Ice Polar Beach Park. Labor Day weekend. Also appear Veruca Salt and Moist. Tuktoyaktuk, Canada. Molson Ice. From the land where ice was born. Toyota Atlantic is much more than an exciting race series. It's the road to Indy. Champions like Ray Hall, Andretti, and Sullivan have taken this very same route. Toyota is committed to the Toyota Atlantic Championship because we may not know where the next series champion will come from, but we know where he's headed.
spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure Platinum Center electrode that's heat-fused for an airtight seal. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. We're back, and this has been a feverish activity down in the hall pits. This is Steve Effort, the... Mechanic who has done so much to put this car back together, took the gearbox off the crash car and managed to put it together and back on this car. And it has been a hot, sweaty day for Steve so far and the race hasn't even started. So they pulled the backup car into position, but they had a lot of work to do on it. And this is the situation that set up the red flag. Now take a look at the approach of the turn. Deferens on the outside on the inside of the chicane. Now watch Algeria hit the curb. Hits the curb, goes forward, and then punts Gilles Deferrin into the fence. So Gilles Deferrin ready to go in the backup car. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Well, Jim Hall has overseen this crew. Change shocks, gears, suspension, tires, wings, brake pads, steering wheel, seat. Jim, this crew did a marvelous job, but the concern now is how good do you think this car will work for your driver? Well, we can't be sure. The cars are not identical. They're very close, but there are some differences. So we tried to put the same setup on this car as we had on the race car in the time we had. We changed a lot of things. I think we did about 90% of it. And uh, the, maybe the other 10% won't make that much difference. I hope so anyway. Would you have been better served if that car had been more prepared, more race ready? Well, I guess that's a possibility. It's, uh, it depends on uh, your point of view and where you're going. I think it was pretty darn close. We made some changes in the other car this morning, and I guess we could have gone to the trouble to put those on, which we didn't. Well, that's the story from Jim Hall. It's a yeoman-like job for this crew. Jan? Well, Gary, first of all, IndyCar did allow the teams to change tires if they like, because normally you have to start the race on the tires that you qualify on. Now, we checked every car as it rolled out. The only cars to change were those who ran Firestone tires. First of all, Tasman. They started the race originally on the soft tires. They have now gone to the harder primary tires. But Scott Pruitt and Alessandro Zanpetri, they've gone here to the sticker tire, to the very soft Firestone, to try for some very quick performance to pick up some positions. Paul? They should come back into the rows of two alignment. Everybody in their original position for qualification. As yet, we're not seeing that kind of lineup. Pace car, Johnny Rutherford at the wheel of that PPG pace car, pulled ahead a bit as they came out of this second chicane. And they still are scrubbing the tires as clean as they can get them. That tire story is going to be fascinating here today. So many good stories on the line in the Indy cars. As the pace car now off the course. One turn. And Jimmy Vassar seems to want to get a head start on everybody else. And Jack Villeneuve has taken him through very slow. Now remember, he needs to get to the line first for a good start, and they're not going to accept it. The general rule is that you want the nose of the pace of the uh, pole car to actually cross the line first. It wasn't going to happen there. The field doubled back on itself in the final turn. That's probably a pretty good move, though. It's going to get them single file for the start. There is Gilda Farron in that rebuilt car. I, I really am quite surprised that a front-running team like that do not have the car absolutely in race-ready trim for a situation just like this. They're just lucky it took so long to refuel the rest of the cars because that's what took the delay. If Valvoline had fueled the cars in half the time, Gilles de Ferre may not have been in this race now in that spare car. Race Day America on ESPN, the Indy cars in Vancouver, ready for a restart after a red flag with an accident involving six different cars, but puts them back in the original lineup. And then the green flag doesn't come out, the field not properly aligned. Let's see if they can do it better now. First time in the history of IndyCar that a backup car has been pulled and put into the starting lineup in a situation like this. 
Uh, Scott Pruitt had an extra lap to scrub in those sticker tires. So now, once again, very slow. Assume that Jack is counting on something that uh, they planned very carefully. Lower gear to get off the line. Pace begins to pick up. He's in the proper position, as is the rest of the field. And here we go. Boy, look at the jump he gets with that start. Scott Goodyear seeks back and forth, looking for a position. Michael Andretti comes up inside Scott to Farron. Very brave, coming up on the back of Gordon. And to Farron comes side by side with Gordon. That car must be working. Christian Fittipaldi gets caught a little out on that corner. Here's the trouble spot again. A little better for DeFerrin this time. Al Unser Jr., not nearly as aggressive, stays behind him. It looks like Christian Fittipaldi's got a problem. Flat right rear tire. He's obviously been hit by somebody. R has made contact. There's the outer rim of the tire. That may cause a yellow. Oh, don't clear that up. Boy, Jimmy Vassar took a real pitch coming into the final turn before the pit straight. You're now ride with Bobby Rahal. Rahal third. That's Vassar just ahead. Oh, he has a run on him. Down the back straight, 170 miles an hour. This is an extended braking zone. Longer on the brakes here. Long straight run before the slow corner here. 35 miles an hour. Look at Vassar accelerate away. Emerson Fittipaldi into the pits. Apparently in contact. Has to change the front nose. That may be the telltale. They started side by side on the grid. Emerson and Christian. That may be the reason why Christian flattened that right rear tire. Oh, is that front nose as opposed to tail nose? He changed the nose. Scott Goodyear, one of his few rides of the season. Honda Power driving for Tasman and chasing Bobby Rahal. Order is Villeneuve, Vassar, Rahal, Goodyear, and Michael Andretti. Fittipaldi limping back to the pits, Jan Vikas. Yes, he came in. It was a pretty routine stop once he got here, but both Fittipaldi's on pit road after the conclusion of the first lap. Of course, he lost all of his time trying to get back here. The Walker crew was quick, but unfortunately all the time lost on the racetrack, Paul. Okay, and Emerson knows a, uh, a Christian tire. They started in the same road. Does that tell you something? A little family problem there? Christian hasn't had a good weekend here. His engine blew up in the early moments of qualifying yesterday and didn't get a time that he thought he deserved. Look how bumpy it is here on the acceleration run to the notch, or out of the notch. The notch being chicane number two. Again, the turn back on to the pit straight. Alan Sir Jr. not showing the aggression that we saw out of him in the first attempt at starting here. Fastest part of the racetrack. Just under 180 miles an hour right here before he stands on that brake pedal. Part of the delay under the red flag was to put fuel back in the car. So we will run the full 100 lap distance. The cars have been refueled so they can do that. Let's go to Jan Vikas. Hey, Paul, when you're talking about the fit of Paldi's, on the original start of the race that was red flag, it turned out that Christian Fittipaldi was confused as to which side he should start. And so he and Emerson kept trying to squeeze each other off the racetrack. They had words during the red flag. And now, of course, it appears as though possibly they may have had contact here on the second start. Looking through the rundown after three of 100 laps here, 1.7 mile course, nine turns, temporary road circuit, very rough, very tight quarter. And somebody in that top five went by here with a very sick sounding engine. Bobby Rahal got by Jimmy Vassar. And now Michael and Scott Goodyear closing up on Vassar. Maybe Tight battle right here, second, third, fourth, fifth. Maybe it's Vassar that has that engine problem. On board with Michael, 11 different cars he had last year coming from the back twice with those two unscheduled stops. He was spectacular. The 
Farron, his backup car, seems to be running fine. No problem. He currently runs in seventh place. No obvious problem. And now here comes Goodyear trying an inside move on Jimmy Vassar. Michael Andretti sitting in position to pass as well. Next hairpin may tell. DeFerrin just got caught out again. As Hunter Jr. tried to get under him. Vassar is in trouble. This engine is broken. It sounds like an exhaust header. He's slow down the straight. Michael will pounce also. Will Robbie Gordon get by? Oh, he slides down the inside. So Gordon going into the hairpin gets passed as well. And Jimmy Vassar, who started second, is falling well behind. You can see that Al Unser Jr. did indeed get past to Farron. Got a yellow flag flying here. And we don't yet see the reason. Yes, we do. Wink just over the top. That is Mimo Schiaparella there. So he is backwards. Hopefully he's kept the engine running. Got the water bottles ready. Two-way communications today being monitored. As you see Schiaparelli sitting down there backwards and it looks like the engine is not going. Indication is that Jimmy Vassar will be on his way in. Comes down inside Marco Greco. Locks up those rear brakes. He tested for this team at Putnam Park just a few days ago. He will do Laguna Seca also. Yeah, yeah, Mingus. Mingus. Jimmy Vassar is in. You can hear in the background, you can hear the conversations between Tom Anderson and Jimmy Vassar. What he's telling him is we had to call you in. We think you have a broken header. If you would have stayed out there, it would have started the bodywork on fire. They now have the lid off the car. They're looking. Doesn't appear as though they found it yet, but it certainly sounded like a broken header for Jimmy Vassar. Yeah, but to his advantage, they've just put out the full course yellow because of Mimo's position there on the course. They're going to have to get him out of that position, and when they put the IndyCar safety vehicles out, they definitely want the field slowed down and under the control of Johnny Rutherford and the pace car. finishes. Everybody figures that dogs like to chase after things. Well, we do. To a point. But not over. Come along. Over. Come along. Again. Come along. As for me, bro, well, I don't go chasing after nothing that don't have soft hair, big eyes, red dog. Old yet smooth, easy to drink, and a real nice set of Come here, Daddy. teeth. Big game for J.T. Snow. Hey, fellas, get a load. Sinatra tickets. Oh. Uh, get this. I can't make it. Get out. Nah, hand to God, I gotta get rid of them. How much? Forty bucks. It's gotta be killing you. Yeah, uh, please. Just that it's Wednesday night and something else came up and... I can't miss it. Don't forget, Wednesday night baseball, Cal Ripken makes baseball history as he passes Lou Gehrig's consecutive games played streak. Cal Ripken. That's sick. Kick his butt. Get it before he leaves. No, I want my money back. Back in Vancouver, the battle heats up between Robbie Gordon and Al Unser Jr. for fourth place. A little later, we're going to take you out to the ballpark. That is the ballpark at Arlington, Texas, as the Kansas City Royals take on the Rangers live on Sunday Night Baseball in the game of the week. Well, Al Unser Jr. is moved up, and there's, there's two interesting, rather similar driving styles here, an almost totally disconnected form of driving for both Gordon and Al Unser Jr. As he's closed down, and is now really worrying Robbie Gordon. And Teo Fabi has been closing in as well with some slower traffic just ahead. And traffic can be a factor here because the difficulty for the traffic is moving offline. There is so much rubber and debris. You get yourself in trouble. But this is, this is the battle here. Al Jr. right now is the fastest man on the racetrack. He currently has the fastest lap. Yeah, but look what Masashita has done to the front of the field. First, second, and third is closed right down on top of the leader, Jack Villeneuve. He enjoyed a little bit of a lead, but right now he has got Ray Hall right behind him. 
There you go, all the way through fifth. They're all right together, and it compressed in that one hairpin. Let's go to Jan Vikas while we watch this battle. Jimmy, you've got out of your car. It first sounded like a broken header. Any idea what the problem was? I don't know. This is, uh, you know, it's very unfortunate. It's the sixth time we've fallen out of a race running up in the top five, and you just can't win championships that way or even come close. So, you know, I'm disappointed, but uh, hopefully this won't happen to us. This is just going to have to stop. I hate to sound like I'm a whiner, but, you know, you have to finish these races to do well. Anything you can tell us about next year? I know you're excited about that. Just, just, just can't wait to get in the next year, and uh, you know, hopefully, well, these things won't happen to me next year. I can make a run to the championship. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. So this fight continues. It's tightened up at the front of the field. Al Unser Jr. continues to work on Gordon. Michael Andretti is beginning to worry Bobby Rahal. Jack Belnev is able to pull away a little bit. We're now 21 laps deep into the race, and one more lap. The fuel window for the first stop will open. Well, this is great stuff here. Robbie Gordon has just equaled the fastest lap of Al Unser Jr. They are the fastest cars on the racetrack. That is why it is closing up at the front. The front is not dropping back. They are moving up. Oh, this is great under braking, Paul. Look at this. Al Jr. is better, but he just can't find the room to squeeze down inside Gordon. Riding with third place, Michael Tail Bobby, sixth place now, closing in on little Al. So now it's one through six. Update on Al Unser Jr., Jan? Yes, when you see that battle between Robbie Gordon and Al Unser Jr., they're both running Goodyear tires. However, the Penske team and the Newman Haas team are running the option compound. In other words, Al Unser Jr. has a harder compound tire than you're seeing with Robbie Gordon. As time goes on, Al Unser Jr. should be able to apply more pressure on Robbie Gordon. Boy, Michael Andretti is working hard trying to get around Ray Hall. Great battle here and a great battle just behind him. Oh, this is great. Michael is all over the place trying to catch Ray Hall. Took a lunge down the inside. You saw it. Then the car began to get away from him. And he does it. He gets down under the inside. I find that hard to believe. I would have thought he lost it. Well, he almost did lose it. It looked to me as if he was virtually out of control. The engine went quiet. He was locking up the rear brakes. But he managed to pull it off. Now, can he reel in Jack Villeneuve? So Michael Andretti around the second into pursuit. By the way, Jill DeFerrin has managed to close up a bit on Teo Fabi. And now Al Unser Jr. around Robbie Gordon, and he chases Ray Hall. Here's the pass, Michael and Ray Hall. See him slip and slide down the inside, just about gets enough traction. Ray Hall is forced to the outside. Robbie Gordon still has the position here, but Al Unser Jr. under acceleration made the move and passed him. Now he attacks Ray Hall. You can get a good view of DeFerrin there as he closes in. So does Scott Pruitt. I think DeFerrin is doing a good job back there for a car that he has hardly sat in. That car will have Honda power next year. Honda engines will power Jim Hall's cars for Gilles DeFerrin next season. They're all strung together. Paul Tracy has just joined the back of that battle from ninth. So second through ninth running together, Gary Gerald. Paul, Paul Tracy has just indicated that uh, he feels his car is working very, very well, but the frustration is beginning to show a bit. He says, I just can't get by anybody. The congestion factor back where he is has got him hamstrung for the moment. The drivers here, as you've indicated, you have to be aggressive, but you've got to be somewhat cautious at the same time. So it's a controlled aggression. And as this race winds on, it's going to be very interesting to see who pushes the envelope a little further, takes the bigger risk. Well, in Paul's case, he's not getting by, not for trying. He's right there. Robbie Gordon. By the way, we have two-way communications with Gordon, two-way communications between the pit and Scott Pruitt, and two-way communications with Michael Andretti and the pits. Those frequencies should get active here in a second. Gordon tries it. Well, what happens there? That's Ray Hall on the pit road as he comes off, almost loses it on the approach. 80 mile an hour speed limit. Gary Gerald is there. He was concerned about the rear tires going off. They've indicated through radio conversation they may go up on tire pressure in the front. They may also make a wing change. There it is. Jimmy Prescott at the right front and 
Ray Hall is gone. That's a quick stop, Paul. Under 12 seconds. Great stop. In the last four races held here in Canada, Ray Hall has finished second three different times. Twice at Toronto and in 93 here in Vancouver. And you just got a quick glimpse of the Diamond Vision, which is at the end of the pit lane here. So all the teams down at the beginning of the pit lane can actually watch their drivers in battle here and look at the man in battle here michael is reeling in jack villeneuve that space really is where ray hall came out scott pruitt runs back in seventh position car slower car to the air inside doesn't appear to be a factor Pruitt in seventh, Jan Bikas. Yeah, so we just had a report from Patrick Racing that there was contact between Scott Pruitt and Paul Tracy, right as Gary was telling us that there was a high level of frustration with Paul Tracy. And there is a potential, there could be a slight bit of damage with Paul Tracy's machine. And now with Michael Andretti right at the back end, the leader continues to have to fight with slower traffic. And that is one of the issues that could be so critical to Jack Villeneuve's championship because just the slightest mistake, he's in the barrier, and this thing goes to the final race of the season in one week at Laguna Seca. Remember what we said in the opening, the drivers are more concerned about who may hit them rather than the mistake they may make. Now, Michael is clearly faster than Jack Villeneuve at the moment, but Alan Sir Jr. is still the fastest car in the race. Right? Oh, there's the move as Michael comes to the inside, pushes Jacques to the outside. Michael Andretti takes the lead of the race. When you force the issue, and it's Michael Andretti doing the forcing, sometimes you have to just let him go, which is what Jacques Villeneuve did there. The championship is still his if he maintains his track position at the moment, irrespective of what Al Jr. does. It's an argument really not worth having, but it looks like Jack wants to get right back into it. And Al moves up there as well. So first through third all together here with pit stops for these cars due at just any moment. Jr. is right at the back end of Villeneuve now. He loves this move, Paul. He just misses the rear tire, slides down the inside. Now he hopes Villeneuve sees him, realizes he pulls it off, and he accelerates away. That's the move that put Michael Andretti into first place. And now, Hal Unser Jr. is beginning to worry Jack Villeneuve as well. But it's still the position that Jack needs, as Derek suggested, for the championship. So at the front of the field now, it's Michael Andretti, then Villeneuve, and Al Unser Jr., Robbie Gordon, and Teo Bobby rounds out the top five. Why did the most serious car bad? He's Max Madsen. Max Madsen Mitsubishi in Downers Grove with row after row of new Mitsubishis, including Diamantes, Galants, Eclipses, 3000 GTs, Mirages, and Monteros. No one has more. And now, you can lease a brand new 95 Max Madsen Mitsubishi Mirage S for only $169 per month for 42 months. $169 per month at Max Madsen Mitsubishi in Downers Grove. Behind the scenes. It frees me so one day you can bring me back again. I'm on Star Trek. Oh, really? What do you do? Well, I play an alien. He just scared my pants off. Ah! I'm the baby. Gotta love me. Beyond New Worlds. Would you like to take a trip in here? On the edge of today's fantasies. Look within your dreams. And tomorrow's realities. The world's first wearable 10 PC. Mike Jarrett. Let me show you around. And guest appearances by Harlan Wilson. Sci-Fi Buzz. Sundays at 9 Eastern. It is. You okay. think? It's just going to be really terrific here. I'll tell you something. Miami has a chance to win everything. Or the Super Bowl? They got a chance to win it all. And so right. Right. Well, can the Niners repeat? Yes. Can Dallas pick up ground? Yes. Will the AFC have a shot in the Super Bowl? No. <laughs> We're back in Vancouver, and here is a battle for the championship, presuming the outcome of that December 18th, that September 18th appeal. Bill Noob and Al Unser Jr., they currently battle for second place. Michael Andretti is the leader. But, boy, if you want a demonstration of the points fight, there it is. And Jack Villeneuve is in all sorts of trouble. The right front and his car keeps locking up. You looking down on this very tight circuit. There's the hairpin from the Honda Helicam. Look at Al. Boy, he pokes the nose right into the back end. Great shots. Now they head right under the stadium. And little Al's going to try him. Nope, moves to the inside. Then... Drifts back behind him, lets him know he's there. Right behind Gordon and Fabi continue to close, continue their fight. 
And it's only a matter of time here before the pass is made or before contact is made because Alonso Jr. is way quicker than Jack Villeneuve at this moment. But Villeneuve has track position. But he is hanging on by the skin of his teeth. I don't know how long he can hang on here. Look at that right front again. 30 laps into the book right now. Alonso Jr. pulls alongside on the main straight. Drag race right down that pit straight across the line. Villeneuve still has the nose. And he pulls away in the corner. But that tells you a little bit about what might happen coming down here to the right-hand hairpin. Alonso Jr. still can't get the acceleration there. But coming off of this corner... Jan Bikas, you've been watching Villeneuve. Yes, I have, and it turns out, Paul, that he is on the primary tire for Goodyear, and of course, they are thinking about that they know that Michael Andretti and Alistair Jr. are on the option compound, and they know they're the two fastest cars on the racetrack. So Team Green is ready at the first pit stop to change over to the option compound. They have them down here in the pit. They're all scrubbed. They're all ready to go. First pit stop right now. They're just trying to hang on so they can make it to that point. Paul? Beyond, he has really been lighting up the fronts under braking. In fact, Robbie Gordon closing in on the back of Al Unser Jr. now. I'd be interested in the condition of these tires once they come off because Jack has really been using them. Here we go again. Al Unser Jr. goes for that position. This time he's blocked as Villeneuve sweeps across the front. Almost looked like there was contact there, but Al Unser Jr. hangs on to him through the first turn. Jack Villeneuve is entitled to use the line he is using. He is not varying his line as he goes to the apex. He's taking a defensive line. Al Jr. almost hits the back of him. Boy, look how everybody closes in under braking. That's got to be scary on board. Now we're with Robbie Borg, Gordon, and Villeneuve locks the brakes again. As Al tries to get around him, this time he gets a close nose on him, gets alongside him, and in the tunnel, Al Unser Jr. gets around. And Robbie Gordon's moving to the inside as well. Boy, look at his whole gang bottled up behind here. Jack is in serious trouble here as everybody through Tracy, everybody through seventh gets through. Well, he waited a lap too long because he is a lame duck out there right now. Surely he is on his way to Barry Green and that crew in the pit lane to get rid of those tires. And there he comes off of the track and into the pit. So Jack Villeneuve, after some problems on the course and problems that could definitely keep him from scoring his championship here, now heads toward his pit and Jan Beekins. That's right, Paul. He brings it in. He stops it on the marks. And we took a quick look at the tires. They are going to be putting the option compound onto Jack's car. Now, of course, that is what Michael Andretti, Al, and Al Unser Jr. have been very effective with. Now they're just waiting for fuel and a salad to Oh, Sam Petri's a little bit in the way. Kind of slow stop here for the Team Green. Boy, Jason King on that left rear really changed it fast. Sam Petri, by the way, was answering not only for the pits, he'd been black flagged for a front wing problem. So they were taking a look at that as well. And the option compound that Jan is mentioning is actually a harder compound. It is faster on these long runs because it does not wear out as fast. And that is what Villeneuve has just gone to. Robbie Gordon peels off. Look at Tracy. Gordon running in third, but as he takes off, that brings Tracy up behind Pruitt. Here is Gordon moving for his stop. We'll listen to the radio as Jan Bikas waits for him. Here he comes. He also brings it in right on the marks. And we're trying to take a quick look to see what tires he's going to. We're looking over the shoulders. It doesn't look as though he's going to the option tire. So Robbie Gordon is taking a Get chance ready, on the softer tire. Okay, Let's see how this one works out. Ray Hull's coming right now. Ray Hull's coming right now. I don't know much you could have done about that, but that's good. I put you by 13. And so with Robbie Gordon... Get after it as soon as you can. The support laps here. We're going to run as quick as we can. Robbie Gordon completing his stop, talking with his team owner, Derek Walker. Michael Andretti has 11 and a half seconds on second place, Al Unser Jr. Of course, Michael, there he is, has not yet stopped. And of course, Michael took full advantage of Jacques Villeneuve just backing up the whole train behind him. And that's what allowed him to pull out such a huge lead so quickly. There's second place, Unser Jr. He has not stopped as well. In fact, in the front of the order, Michael, Unser Jr., Fabi, Pruitt, Tracy, Ribeiro, Brian Herta, Poissel, 
Salazar, Fernandez. That's the top ten at the moment. None of those cars, though, have made their first stop for fuel. We're now on the 35th lap. Based on the fuel window, the presumption is that in this lap or next, they're all going to have to hit the pits. What a temptation it must be to Paul Tracy when he reads the rear wing of Scott Pruitt's car and says, just do it. He can't do it. It's so frustrating between the concrete walls. But yes, Nike Canada backing this Patrick Racing team again with Scott Pruitt. He is running fourth and Tracy running fifth. Here's the Villeneuve situation with Al Unser Jr. All sorts of trouble here. Al Jr. grabs the gear and accelerates. But from here to the end of the lap, Jack Villeneuve was a lame duck, had no speed, no grip, and everybody just shot right by. And Al Unser Jr. must finish third or better to remain alive in the championship. Of course, right now, he runs in second behind Michael. Just how long does a car battery last? About this much time is put into most batteries. But AC Delco puts in more time, so our batteries last over 20% longer. Well, now there's the new Delco Freedom 84, our longest lasting battery ever. We put in seven years of guaranteed starts, making it the granddaddy of all batteries. Hey, my watch. <laughs> Andretti, leader of the race here at the Molson Indy Vancouver, getting some great mileage out of his Ford engine, has now completed 38 racing laps, has not hit the pits. But then again, Allinger Jr. hasn't either until right now, Gary. Paul, we watch from way back. We're up at the Newman Hospital trying to get a look over the wall and having to move back. They're expecting Michael Andretti on the next lap. Junior was going off just a bit. They said in three, then they made it one. He's getting his service and is now underway. Alonzo Jr. falling down through the order as the rest of the field strings past. Michael Andretti doing the pits. And little Al joined in sixth place, but he was not yet up to speed. You see, oh, whoa, Dale Bobby loses it. Fortunately, he doesn't touch anything. Yellow flag comes out. Let's see if he kept the engine going. He did, and he's gone. Nice work, Tail. Whoa, you can get an idea how hard they have to stand on the brakes there. Gary? Michael Andretti, remember the Newman Haas cars, both of them started Looking on good. the optional compound. Lee White talking to Michael. There are 13 there. seconds. Get ready, get ready, 14. get ready, go. Now watch your speed. This is a 15 second stop. Stay left of the line, stay left of the line. Be careful down there, watch your speed. Paul Tracy running in third place. Teammate to Michael Andretti for this and one more race. Announcement expected next week. Best guess it is Tracy goes back to Penske and Christian Fittipaldi joins Newman Haas. Well, Penske traditionally doesn't announce until after the season is over. Newman Haas traditionally announces at the last race. Michael Andretti, a little slow through there. These opening laps are so important because the tires are cold. All right, let's go to Jan Vikas. Teo Bobby has been in after that spin on the racetrack. It was a very, very quick stop for the Forsyth team. He's underway. Another, oh, big blisters on the right front tire of Teo Bobby. So those softer Goodyears definitely having a problem here today. Well, in fact, the question would be, though, Jan, is, is that a problem 
as we're watching tails spin as a result of the tires wearing or the fact that they tend to look blistered if they've been flat, sp flat spotted in a spin. Paul, I'm looking at him very carefully and it does not appear as though the blisters on the tire have anything to do with flat spotting. It looks as though the tires actually have been overused for the compound. So a problem with the softer Goodyears, it does not appear to be a problem with the actual spin, Paul. All right. One of the other stories to track suggested right at the start of the show. Let's go to Brian Herter, runs in third place. You ride with him there. Qualified 15th, he's had a couple of incidents this weekend, nothing serious. But he has managed to claw his way up towards the front right before this first round of pit stops. Currently running in 10th, top 10 for Brian Herter. Came into the pits in third, then on his way out of the pits, fell down through the order, 10th now. And that lap out of the pits is so important because of cold tires. Dick Simon brought up an interesting point today. Look at this, a drag race with Scott Pruitt down the outside. And this, in fact, is a fight for position as Pruitt now picks up 10th place. I mentioned the outlap. Dick Simon mentioned something interesting to me today. He thought tire warmer blankets should now be brought into Indy car racing to warm the tires up. Michael Andretti said absolutely no way. These soft compounds warm up quick enough for him. Let's go pits once again. Gary Gerald. Quick word on Paul Tracy. His stop was quicker than Michael Andretti's. They went for a short fill. We've got the big pit window here, so they are gambling in a sense. Didn't take a full load of fuel. Consequently, he gained positions on the pit stop. He's listed as third right now. It could be great strategy for the crew running Paul Tracy. With all of the stops completed is, in fact, Michael Andretti, the Nuncer Jr., Tracy Rahal, Gordon, and Guzelman. Beyond that, DeFerrin, Emerson Fittipaldi, Andy, Andre Ribeiro, and Scott Pruitt. That's the top ten for you. And we watched over Robbie Gordon's shoulder as he made that pit stop, but it wasn't good enough. It looked good. Derek Walker, we heard him pump his driver up saying, get on, get after it, but Rahal did pass him. Gordon exited the pit lane and made his way down this long front straight. There's second place, Al Enzer Jr. That gives you the differential. Now, let's take a look at Adrian Fernandez, who just flashed through the frame. On board now with Adrian. You remember last week, two big crashes in New Hampshire. This car is made, it's one from two. They put it together. They have just about enough spares to build a second car, but Fernandez Struggled a little bit here this weekend. They're so good on the ovals. Haven't quite touched the sweet spot with this Lola for these road courses yet. Runs 19th right now, but a lot of rumors revolving around him. Possibility of where he may go next year. Team Green has been mentioned quite a bit this weekend. Paul there. Tracy took advantage of those pit stops. Went from seventh all the way to third. We saw Newman Haas do that for both of their drivers at New Hampshire two weeks ago and now Tracy has tracked position and yellow flags could really help him because we don't believe he is full fuel load. So now approaching the halfway point. 43 laps into the record book, 57 to go. A 1.703 nine turn temporary road course. Robbie Gordon, there he is as he's come around Bobby Rahal. In an area, by the way, of Vancouver that has been building up tremendously lately since the race has been here, it's pretty desolate. Site, former site of a World's Fair, but uh, the construction around this area, new, uh, new arena here in Vancouver, plenty of new apartment buildings, really building up, beautiful city. 73,000 spectators here today. Michael Andretti, the leader of the race, a few seconds ago through the chicane. Watch the curve. Whoa! Bounces oh, Michael. over the curve. And you can see that he actually has the correction of the steering on in when the air. he's in midair. So as he knows when he lands, he's actually pointing in the right direction, and away he goes. As part of that trick, you can't be on the brakes either. You want that wheel to, to immediately start the turning moment. If you're on the brakes when you come down, it won't do it. Part of that trick is to instinctively react before your mind has time to think. We just saw a glimpse of Scott Goodyear back there. He's clawing his way up slowly. Now he's 18th. Michael Andretti, 4.4 seconds ahead 
of second place Al Unser Jr. There's Junior as he begins to close down. Michael got bottled up a little bit there behind Hero. Now he's clear, begins to pull away. Traffic is smooth in front of him. So as we look over the top of the stadium and down into Falls Creek, it's Michael Andretti still leading here in Vancouver. Speed Gear presents its latest catalog. There are many state programs available that offer assistance and information to you on a variety of issues. Small businesses create jobs and improve the economy. If you are a small business owner or are interested in starting your own business, the state may be able to help. Call the Small Business Hotline for further information and assistance. The hotline number is 1-800-252-2923. That's 1-800-252-2923. Our heating and air conditioning dealer is Dave Lennox. Actually, that's Mike McNider at Allen Heating Air Conditioning. People trust Dave to keep them comfortable. Mike McNider. It's not just that Dave has the best equipment. This is Dave. I'm Mike. He also passed that Lennox Quality Dealer Standards Program. Dave. Mike. So if you've got a problem, call Dave. Or call Allen Heating Air Conditioning. Call your participating independent Lennox dealer for special savings on select Lennox systems. Lennox, one less thing to worry about. Attaboy, Dave. Mike. Hello? Charlie, it's your mother. Hey, Mom. Gee, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Well, gotta go. It's time for ESPN's NFL Prime Monday. Prime what? Time for Mike Tirico talking X's and O's with Joel Theismann and Sterling Sharp. What kind of name is Sterling? Time for Sunday's final recap and the inside scoop on Monday night's game. So hold the phone, Ma. It's time for NFL Prime Monday. Hello, Charlie. Yeah, hello. Battle for the lead heats up here in Vancouver. Michael Andretti being chased by Al Unser Jr. is closed right in. Battle is right at the front third place. Paul Tracy is about 16 seconds back from this fight. Gary Gerald? Well, just as Paul Tracy gambled, Al Unser and Roger Penske have also gambled somewhat on that last stop. We've just confirmed with the Penske crew it was a short fill of fuel for Unser. So keep that in mind. He's a little lighter than the others. It may make him a bit quicker. He and Tracy gambling that that advantage will pay off later with a possible yellow flag situation. And consequently, that lightweight allowed him to push the fastest lap just up another little bit, 107 plus miles an hour. Now he locks him oh! up. Oh! Allen Jr. locks him up, keeps it going. That could have been a disaster. He is playing with fire here because his championship hopes lie on the fact that he has to be mistake free. Look how close he goes to the concrete wall here, but it's all or nothing for Al Jr. Now remember, that Jack Villeneuve has to be in the top five to score his championship here as we watch Little Al again. Front tires locked up, locked up again, misses the turn in points, and gets away and dodges another bullet. Let's, in fact, review that championship for you. Right now, Villeneuve runs in 11th place while Unser Jr. is sitting up there in second. Now, if Al would win that appeal, then based on the points at this moment, Jack would have 171, Al Unser Jr. would have 154, a 17-point difference, which means that the championship would go on to the final race of the season at Laguna. You think Al is hanging back and taking a deep breath here? Look, about 10 car lengths be between them now. That was a risky move. And you have to get your nose all the way beside Michael Andretti's car, or you can be in trouble here because Michael can be difficult to pass, and Greco is Well, with is Greco at the edge of the course in a precarious area, full course yellow, the pace car will come out. Paul Tracy from 17 seconds back will close up on Al Unser Jr. and Michael Andretti. And indication is that the leaders of the race will not take advantage of this yellow for the stop. It has, after all, only been about 10 laps since they were last in the pits. It has a four-wheel independent suspension system designed to hug the corners and fly down the straightaways. It has a gleaming red finish, durable enough to withstand vigorous bumping. It seats one comfortably. And although this vehicle will never win any speed races, it will help you come out ahead week after week in the checkout lane.
football can be exciting. But truck football? Now that's a rush. <laughs> so if you're going to tackle it, you better get a hold of the right equipment. A 1995 Ford Ranger 4x4. Red 39! Complete with switch-on four-wheel drive, new four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a whopping four-liter V6. So get a Ford Ranger 4x4 and play truck football. How am I going to spike this thing? <laughs> of the Molson Indy Vancouver is being brought to you by Red Dog Beer. Bold yet smooth, unusually easy to drink. You are your own dog. By PPG, world leaders in automotive finishes, sponsor of the PPG IndyCar World Series. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Well, as we go back to green flag racing, the full course yellow had some fascinating pit action. Into the pits, Jack Villeneuve, who came out of the pits with stickers on the right side, also into the pits as we watch the battle at the front between Michael Andretti and Al Unser Jr., with Bobby Rahal and Emerson Fittipaldi. Boy, look at them battle as they come through here, and it looks like Fernandez gets caught just outside of Carlos Guerrero as they come around the corner. Both of them get through clear. But what this did do was eliminate the advantage that first and second had over third place Paul Tracy. Bunched everybody back up just beyond the halfway point here in Vancouver. And that is Scott Goodyear you see in the mix there. He's a lap down. He is 16th, but he may be able to run at the pace of the leaders because Paul Tracy is the next man behind him. There he is. He's got Gordon behind him. Gordon, one of the few front-running Goodyear runners. Oh, come run on, Gordy. Goodyear Rob runners, who's, who's still on the softer of the Goodyear tires. Look at this. Oh, Robbie Gordon in trouble three different times, but still is able to get around Bosell. And now back chasing Paul Tracy for third. Bosell, of course, not on the leader lap. There are 14 cars on the leader lap. Interestingly enough, 14th position. Last car on the lead lap is Jack Villeneuve. Get a glimpse from time to time of the yellow Pennzoil car of DeFerrin. For a backup car, he's having a great day, running fifth right now. There he is, six seconds, just over six seconds behind Michael, and this great battle with Al Jr. all the way down. Scott Pruitt still runs well. Brian Herta made up two places from 10th after that pit stop. Ribeiro now started 16th, running six. Good run for the second Tasman car. National hero now in Brazil is Andre Ribeiro. Here's Gordon. Watch the jerk sideways on Bozell. Bozell, of course, worried about not only his left side, but a slowing car just ahead of him until Tracy was able to finally kick the gears up and get it rolling. Junior all over Michael Andretti. For Junior and the Penske team, the philosophy is really simple. We got to win them both, this race and the final race in one week at Laguna. Christian Fittipaldi out of the race. Jan Bikas is with him. Christian, you brought your car on pit road. What knocked you out? First, I had a I had a flat tire on the start. The tire just blew up down the straight. I don't know why. Uh, second, at the same time, I had a turbo problem right in the beginning of the race. And then we were just running about short of 80, 90 horsepower. I just kept it going, but uh, unfortunately, it really gave up right now. You're on the softer tires. I see a setback here that has big blisters. Was that a problem driving on that compound? That was also a problem during the race. That's why I had pitted so many times. But apart from that, the car wasn't working since the first lap. Like, there was definitely a turbo problem. Instead of running 45 inches on the boost, I was running around 43.8, 44 max. Okay, 
We wish you better luck at Laguna. Thanks. DeFerrin and Ribeiro battling. Ribeiro just getting around. You got a glimpse of it. Getting around DeFerrin, picking up fifth place. And that side-by-side -side drag that we watch with DeFerrin is a very difficult move to pull off right outside our booth here. The left-hander, it's 160 miles an hour. Look how these cars fight for grip through that right-hander as they bounce over these severe bumps. Watch but Ribeiro. Here is Ribeiro, yeah, there, <laughs> there is the situation that got him out of position. Well, that's exactly what we just spoke about. This is the left-hander that we just mentioned. It's so difficult to go side-by-side -side through that left-hander, and Ribeiro just smacks that outside wall, destroys the right side of that Tasman Honda. So the LCI phone lines to Brazil won't be talking about success this weekend. Ribeiro sits in the car. The wheel chased him all the way down, finally bounced off the back end, and we anticipate full course yellow anytime on that car while they get the vehicle out. This is Ribeiro's ninth DNF of this, his rookie season, but of course, one of them will win, though, two weeks ago at Loudoun. There's the full course yellow, and once again, the front of the field will close in, and once again, I expect we're going to see some tactics played in the pits, but now Scott Goodyear, the only Tasman entry, and he is running in 15th position as Ribeiro is out. Splitfire earned a United States patent. Splitfire doesn't look like any other spark plug. And the patented Splitfire doesn't work like any other spark plug. Five extra horsepower by merely installing these plugs. Quicker in the quarter mile. A 4.8% gain in mileage. There's nothing like a Splitfire. You'll get more power and more mileage, or your money back. You'll get more here, and you'll spend less here. Guaranteed. finally does it and he did it on horsepower and a drag down to the corner so on sir jr where he wants and needs to be at the front of the field brian herda after the stops is third bobby rahal is fourth emerson fittipaldi is fifth and michael locks up the rear brake saw something there looked like a piece of paper off of the track but boy look how tight that battle is something flew off now al jr still has the fastest lap of the race but michael is so good in attack situations like this. Look at Michael as he pokes right up under Al Unser Jr. They come to the straight. Raul Boisel, still very much a factor, but he is fast and trying to keep from going a lap down. That is a key. He's not a lap down yet. So he, if he thinks he has the speed, he'll try and stay ahead of these boys. Oh, Al Jr.'s all over him. Jr. just loved to get past him and stick Michael Andretti with him, but he can't do it. Michael loves it. Michael loves it. Moselle stays there. Oh, oh trouble. Michael slowed. Something broke? No. Missed a gear, maybe. Pulled away with real low revs there. 
I can't make out what that I, was. I can't either. Something flew off, and then we saw Micah lock off those tires. Might have been a tearaway. Might have been something on the car. Gary, you have any idea? Crew indicated radio conversation related to gearbox. We don't know if it's a problem that he'll have or if he just missed the gear, but they just showed me the shift sign, the gearbox. So they may have just missed a shift. We'll watch him and see if he continues to get back up to speed. Well, he ran the last lap at just over 106. So we'll keep an eye on him now. The sequential now, gearbox. Look, he's not coming off that corner nearly as fast as everybody else. He's lost his low gears. Look at Tracy and Guzelman side by side. Look at the entire group as they come roaring through there. And Michael getting bottled up on the inside. So now Herta comes up, as does Ray Hall. And Guzelman, there he is as he climbs over the back of Tracy. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Confirmation from Michael Andretti to the crew, second gear is gone. No second gear, that's a major problem, obviously. And at the same time, Jack Villeneuve has moved up in the field as he's now getting back into the points. The most used gear in the gearbox, a Schiatarella again does a 180 in the Pull him back off the racing line, but the most used gear here is that second. Michael is in deep, deep trouble now, and Al Jr. suddenly it gets easier, and he is furious that Bozell will not move over and let him through. Well, now remember, they have a new ruling on the flags. They can show Bozell a flag that says, get out of the way. It's no longer an advisory. It's You're going to have to get out of the way of the car behind you because, in fact, you are holding him up. And what he is doing is holding him up while Bobby Rahal is able to close from second. Or to third, Tracy fourth. Bill Love in a battle back there with Emerson. Guzman in a fight here with Tracy. This is what happens at Vancouver when you have yellow flags and bunches everybody up again and Bill Love is back in the mix. Currently yep. running in 10th position. Place. Well, Tracy and so Unser Jr. Exactly where he needs to be, but Bobby Rahal and Brian Herta beginning to try their close now with 63 laps complete. Hey, uh, Red Dog. Why? Do you ever wonder why we're here? Where? You know, here. Why we exist. No. Well, how come? I got better things to think about. But why are we the way we are? I mean, I'd give anything to be as big as you. True. You ain't big, but you're real quick. <laughs> quick? Yeah. I guess it all evens out then, huh? Well, that might be pushing it. Uh, Red Dog. Hey, hey, Red Dog. Yeah? Full moon tomorrow night. I'm there, buddy. There's a fine line of motor oil separating your car's engine parts that's as little as a thousandth of an inch. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. Look, you know Goodyear Tires. Everybody knows Goodyear Tires. But did you know that Goodyear retailers have lowered prices? An amazing 25% on some of Goodyear's most popular passenger, light truck, and performance tires. It's true, 25%. There's big savings on many other Goodyear Tires, too. Believe it, Goodyear. We say they're the best tires in the world. And now you can save like never before. Now you know, so you better go. in Vancouver, it was Paul Tracy trying to close on Brian Herta and Bobby Rahal. Herta and Tracy got together in the hairpin, and boy, they're in trouble now. And Tracy bounced off the wall earlier, down inside Brian Herta. This is the hairpin. He looks as if he's alongside here. The rear wheels are locked up. Look at this. Brian Herta is an innocent victim here. And it takes out Guzelman, too. Clouded from both sides because Paul Tracy locked up the rear brakes. Trying to pull off that move. But DeFerrin, who was up in the air on the first lap of this race, slides into third with that incident. Now you ride with Paul Tracy. Down the inside. He gets alongside. Watch him. Watch the steering. Now he knows he's in trouble. Rears a lock. Boom. Hits Brian Herta. 
who in turn gets clouded by Guzelman. They're both out. And Michael Andretti also out, eh, Gary Gerald? Uh, brutal, brutal fortune for the Newman Haas team. Michael, so many times this year we've been in this situation where it looks like you've got control of a race. Then it was gearbox problem. Yeah, some uh, some happened with the gears. I, I just started missing them all, and it started jumping out of gears, and uh, I could only stay in second gear, so it wasn't even worth staying out. From what you've seen out there at this point, is Al the guy now to beat? Has he got everybody covered, or can anybody track him down? I don't think so, because uh, guys like Bobby, their tires tend to go off uh, halfway through the run, and... Uh, Al seemed to stay about the same as mine, and uh, I think I was the only one I could run with him. Thank you, Michael. In the last 11 IndyCar races held here in Canada, 10 have been won by either Michael or Al Unser Jr. Michael's out, little Al leads it. Oh, he does, but it's not a comfortable lead. Look at Ray Hall on the attack here. Ray Hall surprised everybody when he jumped way up the standings during qualifying yesterday to start in third place, despite how sick he was. In fact, the doctors told him not to bother trying to run the car on Saturday. He thought better, had a great qualifying run. And now Al Jr. is suddenly on the defensive. Mind you, Al Jr. spent the last three laps or four laps waving at Bozell, trying to get him to move out of the way. So the order has changed substantially with some interesting incidents and attrition. Putting Unser Jr. on top, then Ray Hall, then DeFerrin in third. Villeneuve is now in fourth. Robbie Gordon is in fifth. Three different chassis in the top three positions. Ray Hall in Alola, DeFerrin in a Renard, and of course Al Unser Jr. in his Penske. Speed Gear presents its latest catalog. Championship fights. Julio Cesar Chavez and undefeated David Kamau. Frankie Randall and former champion Juan Koji. Frank Lyles versus Mauricio Amaral. And Carl Daniels against Julio Cesar Vasquez. Four championship fights. Saturday, September 16th, live on pay-per-view. If you're a victim of burglary or fire, the family you cherish and your most precious possessions could all vanish in a moment. Protect your family and home with a monitored security system from Multimedia Security Service. The industry's leader in equipment and service, Multimedia can install an affordable system in your home today. Some things can't be risked. Call Multimedia Security and protect the family and treasures you can't replace 24 hours a day to nature, huh? Yeah, finally some peace and quiet. Fresh air, a campfire, and ESPN college football. <laughs> it's fourth and goal. A timeout has been called. <laughs> Play timeout for Coors Light for your chance to win a million dollars. See the Coors Light beer display for details on how to play. We need more Coors Light. Watch ESPN college football with Boston College at Virginia Tech. Oh, 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 oh come on. <laughs> We're back in Vancouver. There's the leader of the race, Al Unser Jr. You see that Bobby Rahal is just behind him. Rahal has been a little bit closer, but then faltered a few laps ago. And now is working his way back to try and catch Al Unser Jr. DeFerrin is third, despite that incident on the first lap. Fourth is Jack Villeneuve. And, of course, in that position, he is going to leave here scoring his IndyCar championship in Canada. But there are many other factors that are going to fit into that situation. We look down from the Honda Helicam as we watch Allinger Jr. flash across the start-finish line and into turn one right alongside the stadium here. The real question is going to be one of fuel. Now, the presumption is that I'm making that everybody at the front of the field is going to have to stop. Villeneuve is going to have to stop, I think, a little bit ahead of everybody else. Gary Gerald, can you help us out on this? We can certainly try. Now, keep in mind that Allen Sir Jr. pitted on lap 57. That means that they got two laps of yellow. They went green then after 59. He'd have to go 41 laps 
which is really stretching it in our estimation to be able to go the distance. Bobby Rahal, who's running second, pitted five laps prior to him. He had tire problems. Remember, both of the fronts were blistered. So we think definitely that camp will have to go for fuel. The question here with the Penske team is going to be very iffy. They get more yellow, that helps them. If they don't, they may have to get a splash. Of course, two Mercedes engines at the front of the field, Unser Jr. and Ray Hall. Let's go for further information to Jan Bikas. Paul, you're asking about Jack Villeneuve. Now, he came in on lap number 51, so he is trying very, very hard, along with Team Green, to save fuel. They're trying to make it to the end, but I see no possible way that Jack Villeneuve can make it to the end of the race without bringing it in and getting a splash of fuel. Now, for Robbie Gordon and some of the others that pitted on that full course yellow, according to their teams, they do feel they can make it to the end, but not as early as lap 51 as we have for Villeneuve. All right, so let's set that scenario. The front of the field, Unser Jr. Ray Hall. You just heard Gary Gerald's estimate. Now then, third place is to Farron and then Villeneuve. All right, right behind Villeneuve, lined up in such a way that in all likelihood, if Jack stops, Robbie Gordon in fifth, Pruitt in sixth, and Johansson in seventh would all come past. Now that would put Jack into sixth position and he could still win the title from six. But look at this, he just got hit. He just got hit by Goodyear. Goodyear's trying to save the car. He's in trouble, comes off. Thought he was gonna make the turn into the pits despite the damaged tire. Didn't do it. Well, that doesn't change that scenario except how much trouble might he be in? He doesn't look like he's running full tilt now. Well, Scott Goodyear was taken by surprise there because Jack Villeneuve suddenly slowed coming out of the notch. The, the group of cars behind him was suddenly, Goodyear pulled out of line, jumped ahead, thought he was past Villeneuve, pulled over, and you can see the damage to the right front wing in Jack Villeneuve's car. Here. Villeneuve suddenly goes so. Look at Goodyear. Takes his by, boom, clouts the wing of Jacques Villeneuve, destroys his left rear tire, and now he luckily gets down the escape road, or else Scott Goodyear was in for a hefty accident here. Look at Pruitt and Johansson down the inside. They get to watch and stand clear. And another key to that situation right there, as we watch Goodyear come into the pits, is that Scott Pruitt got past and put Villeneuve to seventh. And if he stays in seventh, Jan Vickas, the championship goes on to Laguna Seca in a week. Yes, we had the opportunity to check with Team Green, and right now they're all huddled around, and they've not been able to give us an answer if there is a problem with Jack after that contact. But he didn't look as though he was at full speed when he went by us. Right now, a lot of discussion going on here at Team Green. Yeah, there are cars going past him that should not. Jack is apparently in fairly serious trouble right now with regard to the race and the championship. Hunter Jr. is where he needs to be at the top of the order. I get here early to stock up on Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil because it gives my engine complete protection. Me too. Michael Andretti. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility and fight vaporization. And it's the same oil used by championship racing teams. Empty. Tough track, huh? Get a Major League Baseball team cap when you buy a case of Haviland Formula 3. With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure Platinum Center electrode that's heat-fused for an airtight seal. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. Charlie, will you hold me in your arms forever? Sure, dumpling thing. Ah! 
As long as forever starts after Mike Tirico, Joe Theismann, and Sterling Sharp do ESPN's NFL Prime Monday. You're so romantic, Charlie. Welcome, everybody, to our Race Day America studios. I'm Carl Ravitch. Due to the extreme lengths of the Southern 500 won by Jeff Gordon, we have to jump ahead in the IndyCar race. So, we now jump ahead after this commercial back to Vancouver. How about your junior still on the lead? Enjoy. Look. You know Goodyear Tires. Everybody knows Goodyear Tires. But as you know that Goodyear retailers have lowered prices? An amazing 25% on some of Goodyear's most popular passengers. Light truck and performance tires. It's true. 25%. There's big savings on many other Goodyear Tires, too. Believe it. Goodyear. We say they're the best tires in the world. And now you can save like never before. Now you know. So you better go. It has a four-wheel independent suspension system designed to hug the corners and fly down the straightaways. It has a gleaming red finish, durable enough to withstand vigorous bumping. It seats one comfortably. And although this vehicle will never win any speed races, it will help you come out ahead week after week in the checkout lane. Arctic Ocean, music by Metallica and Hole, light show by Mother Nature, and ice by Molson. Molson Ice, the Molson Ice Polar Beach Park, Labor Day weekend. Also appeared, Veruca Salt and Moist. Tuck Day Up Tuck, Canada. Molson Ice, from the land where ice was born. Toyota has won more off-road championships than anyone, but winning isn't everything. Building better trucks is. So after every race, we take our trucks apart, piece by piece. We look for ways to make them even more powerful, even more durable. Because whether we're building a one-of-a-kind racing machine or your one and only truck, at Toyota, our minds are always racing. This is the Texaco Haviland stock car. And this is the Texaco Haviland Indy car. And while these cars run on special fuels, we figured it was still a good way to remind you that Texaco Clean System 3 gasolines give your car unsurpassed performance. And Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil and Texaco antifreeze coolant provide complete protection. But if we really wanted you to remember our name, maybe we should have sponsored something slower. Every bit of information in the world of motorsports. Check out RPM tonight on ESPN2, the world premiere, a weekly Sunday night motorsports program at 8 o'clock Eastern. Back in Vancouver, Jack Villeneuve, he's got a problem. Al Unser Jr. has put him a lap down. Now Jill DeFerrin is closing in to put him a lap down as well. He is not in a position to take the championship. He runs eighth. The leader of the race is Al Unser Jr., followed by DeFerrin. You have an update on Jacques Jan Bikas? Yes, I do, Paul. They have finally now confirmed that it is gearbox trouble, just like Derek thought it was. He is just trying to limp around and get as much points, or at least as much mileage as he can here today. Gary, you have more? Just checking here with optimism now is the byword in the Penske camp. We were doing the math and wondering, could they stretch it? Could they make it without making a splash for fuel in the final laps? They say that Junior is one of the very best at conserving. They're short shifting. They've leaned it down. They are optimistic right now, and they're saying, yes, we can go the distance. I guess we're about to find out. Well, he has an eight-second pad over second place to Farron, so that's a pad that would allow a little stretch. Not very much. You can see how slick that corner is getting. A lot of marbles just off the line there. It'll be difficult for anyone who wants to move out and pass almost anywhere on this circuit. Been a problem of the competition between Firestone and Goodyear. It's the uh, byproduct of that competition. Tires are softer. They tend to throw marbles easier. And the marbles just hang there, just off the line. And in the latter parts of the race, it can make it very difficult. There is second place 
Jimmy Vassar started in second place on this race. He, of course, is out for the Ganassi team. It's Brian Herta, who is the only car left in competition for that team. They run in 16. Engineered by Mo Nunn. Brian Herta, High Speed Herta is his nickname. He's been a winner here in the past on the Indy Lights series. Firestone Indy Lights, of course, producing so many front-running racing drivers. Technically very, very good with a racing car. But he was the innocent victim today of an attack by Paul Tracy when Tracy went to slide down the inside, got out of control. So Herta now can continue, but he's in 16th place. You've been staying up to date, in fact, reports this week on Speed Week. What's the story with Ganassi, Vassar, Heard of that team? Do you have any idea? And also, you reported Greg Moore into position. Uh, players did announce, in fact, that they had formed a new association with Forsyth Racing to go IndyCar racing. Now, obviously, that money moves from Barry Green's team over to, over to Forsyth. We presume Greg Moore, who has dominated, totally dominated the Indy Light Series this year, will move into that cockpit. That only makes logical sense. However, it's not confirmed yet. On the Ganassi front, there is no announcement yet, but we presume that he will re-sign Jimmy Vassar. I think, in fact, he has re-signed Jimmy Vassar, and we are led to believe that Brian Herter will also stay there for a second year. This is the fight now. Ray Hall, Johansson, Pruitt. Pruitt is fourth, then Johansson, then Ray Hall. And they're all right together on the circuit. Unser Jr. has now 10 seconds. He's pulling away from DeFerrin. And Paul, here's the problem now for Bobby Rahal. He needs to get by Stefan Johansson and Scott Pruitt. However, they are embroiled in their own separate battle. This is for a good position, fourth and fifth, so they don't dare back off. So there's a catch-22 here between Rahal and Pruitt and Stefan Johansson. Championship out of reach for Villeneuve here. It'll go on to a final race. And that'll become a tiebreaker on the wins as well in that IndyCar point system. Look at that three-way battle. And look at that defensive inside line by Pruitt. Comes down inside Matt Schuster, goes right to the apex. And Ray Hall again. He doesn't have the speed to catch Alonso Jr., but he's certainly building the frustration level now at not being able to easily pass Johansson and Pruitt for all good reasons, though. And remember, with that move by Ray Hall, having to go into the pits as Ray Hall comes around Johansson and stays there. So he gets around Johansson. Ray Hall should be able to go all the way to the end. That may be a key factor as we come to the final laps right after this. Speed Gear presents its latest cap. But Norma says he's a whole lot of man. And you know how I like those big athletic types. Girl, this could be the one. Wish me luck. If Saturday nights out are what you expected. Hi. I'm your date. Why not stay in with HBO Saturday Nights? It's a new movie never seen before on HBO. Every Saturday night, 52 Saturday nights a year. Guaranteed. Want a little donut? I'll get back to you. HBO Saturday Nights. Hey. Whitney Imports Volkswagen Isuzu has been successful for 27 years because our customer is number one. Can I tell them now? Can I tell them now? We have the best service and the best selection. How about now? Can I tell them okay. now? Okay. Right now you can lease this 95 Passat GLX six-cylinder air conditioning, AM FM cassette, power moonroof, power windows, power locks, dual airbags, analog brakes, and more for only $298.71 a month. Don't delay. Come to Whitney Volkswagen Isuzu today. 150 East North Avenue in Villa Park. Gee, I bet this is a different guy than you met during the recruiting process, huh? Welcome back, everybody. Carl Ravage in our Race Day America studios. Twelve cautions at the Southern 500. Because that race took so long, we again are going to have to jump forward to bring you the exciting conclusion of the IndyCar race from Vancouver. And don't forget, tonight on ESPN2, RPM Tonight makes its debut. You'll get everything from the weekend that was on wheels and that was moving quickly at 8 Eastern. Meantime, for those of you on ESPN, at the top of the hour, Chris Berman and company for NFL Primetime. Now we go back to Vancouver right after this break. The Molson Ice Polar Beach Party. With metallic, cold, brew salt, and moist. 
Sunday, I've got Canada. Labor Day weekend. All sweet ice from the land where ice was born. Look. You know Goodyear Tires. Everybody knows Goodyear Tires. But did you know that Goodyear retailers have lowered prices? An amazing 25% on some of Goodyear's most popular passengers. Light trunk and performance tires. It's true. 25%. There's big savings on many other Goodyear Tires, too. Believe it. Goodyear. We say they're the best tires in the world. And now you can save like never before. Now you know. So you better go. Texaco Clean System 3 Gasolines to Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil and Texaco Antifreeze Coolant, there's no better place to take your car than to the star. And to your car, take it to the star. Couple of quick changes on the circuit. Johansson around Pruitt for fourth. And then Ray Hall making his move on Pruitt as well. So still at the top of the order is Al Unser Jr. 12 seconds ahead of DeFerrin with two laps to go. Roger Penske spends a considerable amount of time talking to his driver on the radio. Every lap sometimes, he will talk to him to update him on his nearest challenger to talk him through how he needs to handle the closing forces of this race. Incidentally, if the radios ever go out on these Penske's, they have a digital message board on the steering wheel that they use to send information to the drivers. Well, it looks like everybody's going to give it a shot for the final lap. White flag is out. Al Unser Jr. does not stop. DeFerrin does not stop. Will they make it all the way? Tire marks on the nose, so the Penske's been in battle. It doesn't have far to go now. They came across the line, Unser Jr came across 12 seconds ahead of this man, DeFerrin, looking for his best ever result. Allinger Jr. keeping power, but definitely reduced speed a bit. Squeezing it slowly off the corners. Gordon in third, Johansson fourth. Good result for Stefan. Then Ray Hall, Pruitt, Fittipaldi, Tracy, Zampedri, and Bosell. Villeneuve is out of the points as Al Unser Jr. takes the win. The championship goes on to the final race of the season in one week at Laguna Seca. What a terrific run for the man who moved to his backup car after a crash on the start. Jill DeFerrin finishes this race in second. Now Robbie Gordon being challenged right at the end here by Stefan Johansson. Let's see if he can hold him off. Ray Hall moves inside of Johansson and challenges Johansson but can't get it done. So it's to Farron, Gordon, Johansson, Ray Hall. Today's coverage of the IndyCars from Vancouver has been brought to you by Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born, by Goodyear, number one in tires. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. This is Michael Andretti's Indy car. You can't get his engine. You can't get his tires. But you can get his motor oil. Texaco Haviland Formula 3. It's formulated to control volatility and fight oil vaporization. It provides complete protection, and it's the exact same Haviland you can buy right off the shelf, which, by the way, is a heck of a lot easier. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. Beyond the Arctic Circle. Beyond the tree line. Beyond experience. Molson Ice Polar Beach Party. Labor Day weekend, 1995. With Metallica and Hall. Also appearing, Baruta Salt and Moist. Tucked out to Arctic Canada. Molson Ice. From the land where ice was born. In these mountains, you need a tough truck. 
Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something too. My Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Jack, I know a disappointing day for you. What slowed you down there in the end? Well, fifth and sixth broke, and uh, it was okay for the backside, but here you're for too long on the straight line, and you know there's no way we could keep up the speed. Tell me, I know you wanted to win the championship here. You might win it here, depending on the appeal, but now it goes down to the final race at Laguna. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's annoying. I think it's stupid anyway that there's an appeal that goes on for four months and that uh, it keeps everybody waiting, not only us, but all the guys that are fighting for second position and so on, and uh, it's a little ridiculous. It's not very professional, but, you know, that's the way it is. And uh, we'll Everybody's excited about the first Sunday of prime time.